What's going on guys and welcome back to Gunshot Gaming. I'm Tito Rosado and we just got hit with another update on the development of Skate 4, so I'm gonna fill you in on everything we learned. So if you don't know, about nine months ago, we got our very first The Boardroom meeting from the developers of the new EA Skate. So on their YouTube channel, they've been putting out updates every couple months to kind of tell us some new info as to what's happening with the development as they've been very transparent on where they're at as they still have a lot of time before this is going to be done. I personally like how they've been very transparent about the development of this game because as you know, when those Grand Theft Auto 5 leaks happened and people were like, oh my God, the game looks terrible, but it was like, that was so early in development and that's why I feel like they've been very vocal about everything you have seen has been pre, 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 pre alpha footage and the game is going to be a lot more tightened up before it actually releases. So this was episode three of them giving us the boardroom meeting. Now we always have had the senior creative director as the host. For this one, they did have the activities designer, the experience designer, and the lead systems designer. Now, right off the bat in the video, before they went over anything new, they did wanna address some questions that some people had from their previous video. First being that the reason behind nobody on console has been able to do any of the playtesting yet is because they're currently focused on only doing playtesting on PC. So for anybody out there who has signed up to be a playtester, me, and wondering why you haven't got an email yet because you've said that you want it for your Xbox or your PlayStation, it's because currently they are only focusing on bringing in playtesters who are playing on PC. And the second thing is that they wanted to address again that there will be no paid loot boxes as that has been a question that's been asked a lot knowing that this is a free to play game coming from EA of all places where we know they are the king of loot boxes and draining people's wallets. So I know we all had that worry but they've continued to let us know that that is not the case. There will be no pay to win elements and anything you will be able to purchase will be cosmetic. So the focus of this boardroom meeting was really around what you're gonna be doing in the city, which they are calling activities. Activities are ever-changing and evolving and not a stagnant experience. They are grounded in our reality, but we can bend and break the rules. They celebrate and support players and the community. And I feel like that's kind of been the whole focus of everything is community, right? Even just with how transparent they've been about the development, they want to build that community before the game even comes out because they know they've already built a very strong community of people who love the skateboarding games. Me being one of them, I grew up on these games. They're phenomenal and I'm so excited we're finally getting a new one. So that's where I think it's important for them that they know that they not only have to cater to the person like me who grew up on it, but then also to some of the new people who are just maybe going to start it for their first time because it's been quite quite some time since we've gotten a new skate game. I bet old man Krabs is gonna break any day. Squidward, Squidward. Now they did let us know that there's four main activities that you will be doing when in the city, but before I touch on those, I did want to confirm that they let us know there is a story within this game. So not only a story focused on you as a player, but they even said kind of the story of the city. I'm really curious what exactly that means and how deep it will get. I mean, playing through some of the other stories in the Skate franchise, they were awesome. I mean, especially, uh, I mean, uh, I'm gonna go off here real quick, but those intro videos, right? Those intro videos alone were some of the best things I've ever seen in a skateboarding game, right? They were so fun, so uh, getting all the pros to do these random acting stuff, like they really did kind of make you feel like you were a part of something and I loved that. I'm really curious to see if we're gonna get a good little intro video out of this new skate. But in regards to that, I hope there's some type of cool story and it's not just little filler because I, I do kind of worry that while they say there is a confirmed story, is it going to be like the story we're getting out of Fortnite or even Halo Infinite, right? I'm, that kind of stuff I don't care about. A quick little video of like, hey, this is what you're doing. Like, I want there to be some type of other progression there, which I'm hoping for, but we'll see. They said there'll be another video later on where they go into more detail, not only about your story as a player, but the story of the city as a whole. Now, throughout this video, they use the term flumping a lot. And what flumping is, is everything you're doing when you're off the skateboard. So it's kind of what you're flicking for jumping, wall running, climbing, all the other things you'll be doing, because as you've seen, there's a lot more you can do off your board and really it's going to present I feel like a lot of fun things to do with community events as a whole. All right so now getting back to those four activities that you'll be doing as you're skating in the city. The first one is simple enough it's just called challenges. Now these are short solo experiences that rotate periodically. The second activity they talked about are pop-ups which are dynamic events that are all about bringing people together. 
The third activity being community events, which most of you who have ever played a live service game should be pretty familiar with what those are like. And the fourth activity being throwdowns, which are user initiated and fully customizable. It means that anywhere within the city, you can find a spot that you wanna throw down with your friend. You can kind of create your own event and your own challenges. And as they said, it's gonna be fully customizable and you can actually add different modifiers to kind of switch it up. And speaking of modifiers, they did show off both the Slappy and the Firecracker, which looked so clean, and that's something that was not in Skate 1, 2, or 3. So exciting to see as they're looking to evolve it in a way that's truly true to skateboarding and not trying to evolve it in a way that gets farther and crazy from skateboarding. Obviously the wall running, jumping, climbing, I get that that's like a little more out there, but I think it does present a lot of fun. So it's good to see that while they're giving more things to do, they're also still focused on the core of skating and building it up. So we're getting more things to get more realism out of it. So within all these activities, there will be things that will be changing daily, weekly, and seasonally. So obviously, by them saying seasonally, I know it means that once again, like other live service games you're familiar with, they'll have different seasons, and let's hope that we're gonna get some great content coming each season. Another thing that they really reiterated a lot in this video is how much they wanna make this game for everybody, right? They wanna make it for me, the person who grew up on all the skate games and who wants a good challenge and who also is a true skater at heart. I mean, I've been skateboarding for like 15 years, so I want the realism. I want something that's a little harder while still having fun, right? But there's other people who maybe don't know a lot about skateboarding, but they still enjoy playing the game. So what they've done is by every challenge that you encounter, there's gonna be three different difficulty tiers. So you can see here, they gave us this example showcasing the three difficulty levels of own it, crush it, and shut it down. Own it being the easiest, crush it being mid tier, and shut it down being the hardest. Going from land any trick, do a kickflip or do a 360 flip. And these have a difference of 50 experience points between each level. And that kind of ties back to what I said earlier, that I feel like they are doing a good job of trying to make sure it's both welcoming to new players, but also old players like myself are gonna still be excited and challenged. And once again, at the end of the video, they did reiterate that the reasoning behind all these challenges continuously changing and updating, so whether you log in next day, next week, next season, you'll always have new things to do, is because you're gonna be working towards unlocking new items, whether that be clothing or even items such as flat bars, you know, quarter pipes, just different things to create stuff within the city as well. So they wanna make sure that there's going to be lots of things to unlock and it all can happen by you playing the game and not paying money. Now, we'll see if that actually turns out true, which I'm hoping, because once again, they seem like they're really trying to be community focused and actually being very truthful with everything because they know people are worried about that. So I'm hoping they know, you know, they don't try to do anything crazy because they will get raked through the coals if they come out and they're just a straight up pay to win or it's like a super slow grind because that would suck. And that's pretty much everything they went through for this most recent boardroom meeting. Like I said, this is just one of three that they've done so far. This is the third one. Two other videos to check out if you haven't, you can go to their YouTube channel. I will have it linked in the description because not only does it have more boardroom meetings where they're simply going over, you know, all the things they're doing to develop this game, but also they've put out play test updates where it just simply shows you a bunch of legit gameplay of what people have been doing as they've been play testing the game. So that's been really fun to watch. Now, me personally, my hype level is through the roof on this one. I am so excited. I played the crap out of these games like crazy when they came out, and I cannot wait to get my hands on the sticks and play Skate 4 myself. I know it's technically called Skate, but I feel like everybody refers to it as Skate 4. It's a little easier. Um, but yeah, it's just looking so good. Every time we get a new video showcasing some more gameplay, you can see the little subtleties, like I said before, even them adding in the firecracker and the slappy, but even some of the smaller things, like they showcase a guy going in a crook and kind of popping out forward onto the flat. It looks so clean. So actually, I'm gonna leave you here with just some more, pretty much all the new gameplay footage we just got out of the most recent video. Um, but what are your thoughts so far? Are you excited for this game? Have you been waiting for this game? You know, do you like what they're doing with these developer updates? Would you rather them just stay silent until it comes out? Let me know what you're thinking. Um, and if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. If you haven't hit the like button already, make it happen. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, guys.